We remember the day the stars answered. The day we learned we were not alone. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to Terra Invicta. In this video you're going to see all the different factions that you can play in Terra Invicta. There are quite a few different and they all play very, very different. So let's have a look at the first one, the Resistance. We remember the day the stars answered. The day we learned we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, some of us saw wondrous possibility and others existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them until it burned through our atmosphere and crashed in a remote region, leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. In our ignorance, we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. Everyone loves heroes, depends on them, to save us from evil, lead us through darkness. Problem is, real heroes are always ignored. What no one understands is that being shot at is easy. The hard part is convincing someone they're drowning before it's too damn late. Resistance is all about protecting humanity by resisting the alien invasion. They are there to make sure that humanity survives. They're essentially XCOM. However, um, you can do this objective in a few different ways. You can say, you know what, I'm going to defend humanity on Earth. I'm going to make Earth in an unassailable fortress. Alternatively, you can say, no, that's a bit too defensive for me. I'm going to go more proactive. I'm going to start launching my own spaceships and I'm going to make sure that no ship even gets to Earth. You have options when it comes to playing the Resistance. Resistance is the only faction that has a tutorial, so I recommend that if this is your first time playing, at least start with the Resistance and enable the tutorial so you get a bit more of an understanding about the game. As for the Customize Faction button that you're going to see next to all factions, it allows you to change the name of the faction, the adjective, the title leader, and the fleet name. However, it does not change the way that the game is played. It does not change the objective of the faction. That, however, might come later as we're going to get mods. Now, onto the next faction. I'm going to cut off the first part of the, let's say, the trailer, because they're all the same. It's the second part that has a different flavor for every one of them. So let's have a look at humanity first. Every war is won well before it is fought. Leaders must be prepared, their plans in place, and their weapons ready. The sheepdog cannot be trained when the wolves already hunt the flock. Our enemy is surely stronger. Their plans are noble, but this is our home. It can be our fortress or our tomb. There is only victory or death. As you can see, humanity first is not exactly about negotiating with the aliens. Eradicate the aliens and all who support them. You are not out there to make friends. And that goes for not only the aliens, but also other factions that stand in your way. Or maybe not so much stand in your way, but those who support the aliens. So another faction that is potentially going to be, well, let's say the Resistance. They could be something of an ally. They will not support the Resistance, or they will not support the aliens, of course. The Servants very much do support the aliens by any means necessary. More on these guys later. Humanity first, I see clashing a lot with other human factions. Meaning that you're not just going to be fighting off the aliens, you're also going to be fighting off other factions. That's going to make for a very interesting gameplay, as you'll be fighting battles on Earth as much as you will in space. On to the next one. What does the initiative do? Survival of the fittest has always been the game. Whether you're beating your enemy with a rock or a lawsuit, you have to be vicious to be the top dog. Because when you've worked for everything, and you've fought for all you have, nothing will satisfy you, except everything. So the initiative, definitely not one for thinking small. The initiative is out for power, and they want to exploit the alien presence to do that. 
This might mean that they are not opposed to letting the aliens take over territories or countries who are opposed to their interests. You can potentially weaponize the aliens by making other states weaker and then allowing the aliens to weaken the state further, potentially taking over as the initiative afterwards. I don't know a whole lot about the initiative, but I am very interested in seeing how they're going to play. On to the next one, the servants. So, what we wanted to see. Rapture, fear, revelation, lies, and at the nexus, salvation. We entreat our earthly forms to its cleansing flame, praying that we will be found worthy. For only by accepting we are servants may we ascend. And only by excising the doubt within and around us may we be brought into its holy embrace. Servants are considered to be an easier playthrough. They are all about supporting the aliens, and as the trailer showed, almost in a religious fashion, hoping that they're proven worthy. Now, this means that you will likely clash with several of the other factions. I mean, clashes are inevitable, but especially humanity first is completely opposed to the ideas of the servants. And I think that the resistance also has a thing or two to say about this particular strategy, which is not necessarily going to be furthering human survival. Um, the servants are not particularly appealing to me, but they might appeal to you if you're looking for an easier playthrough. Let's see what else we have. We have the Protectorate. Let's have a look. The world we know is more precarious than anyone cares to admit. It rests upon a delicate balance of compromise and mutual understanding. And when a terrifying new force upends that fragile peace, it falls to us to put the pieces back together, to create new balance for us and for our children. The Protectorate is, in a way, a little like the Servants, but different. The Servants seem to promise blind faith in the aliens. Humanity is going to be protected by the Protectorate by appeasing them, working together with them, and not so much groveling as the Servants, I hope. This, again, means that you're going to be at odds with factions like the Resistance, factions like Humanity First, and potentially also by the Servants. Because the servants might think that you're not being serving enough. So the protectorate's going to play different from the servants. And I'm interested to see how exactly I'm going to be able to appease the aliens if I pick this playthrough. Because it means I'm first going to have to be able to talk to them. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't speak alien very well. On to the next. Who do we have? The Academy. Fear is understandable. A natural reaction to the unknown. It is only by joining together that we can rise above our base impulses. Our strength lies in our collective knowledge and our rich history of innovation. It is that bond that gives us courage. For if we cannot rise above our fear, we have learned nothing. And we are lost. Whereas the servants and the protectorate are working up towards the aliens, the academy says, nope, we are equals. It's going to be difficult to do, because the aliens, initially at least, have far better technology. They're able to make it to Earth, they're able to set up bases all over the solar system, and we are still waging our petty little wars on Earth. So you're going to have to do a lot of work as the Academy to make sure that the aliens start to understand that maybe it's not the best idea to attack Earth. Convince them that we are equals. That leaves us with one final faction, Project Exodus. A very interesting one. Let's have a look. It is disconcerting at first to awaken to an unfamiliar home. To open your eyes and see that everything you knew has changed forever. But unease has long been the price of wisdom. There comes a time when we must accept change, no matter how great. There comes a time when we must all leave home. Final faction, Project Exodus, is about escaping Earth, or rather, escaping the aliens. 
How are you going to make sure that the aliens don't follow you to a new Earth or a new inhabitable planet? I'm not sure yet, but we'll just have to figure that out. Project Exodus is going to be focusing heavily on space development. You're going to have to do a lot of work because none of the factions that you play as start out with anything as much as a space station that you can build ships at. So you're going to be having, well, you're going to have to set up a lot of space facilities, a lot of launch pads, and potentially also do quite a bit of orbital mining, which is a very interesting thing that I'm not going to go into in this particular video. So those are all the factions. Resistance, Humanity First, Initiative, Servants, Protectorate, Academy, and Project Exodus. The eighth faction is the aliens. So let me know down below in the comments which one is the one that you're going to be going for first. Which one do you think is most interesting? Which one do you think is least interesting? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, by all means, hit the like button. You'd really be doing me a favor. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more Terra Invicta.